Okay, we just got done with catching some whiting and uh, a shark and uh, I forget that other fish you got, but Danny, tell the folks out there what the cost is and uh, I know that you run the morning programs right now, uh, 7, 7 to 10 in the summertime, 8 to 11 or whenever it warms up in the winter time, but uh, what's the cost and how many people? Yeah, it's about $100 for about a three hour um, event and take up to about three people. Uh, each additional person will be $20 ahead. And in that three hours, you'll learn how to tie a knot, how to, how to make a rig, how to hook the bait, how to cast, everything you need to know to get yourself started with surf fishing. And most importantly, how to get that fish off the line, off the hook, so you can eat it that night. That's right. Okay, Daniel's got something. Willie's in there checking it out. What do you think it is? What's it feel like? It was like a little shark. Okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, what? Oh, yeah, that's what. It, that's a. That's a bonnet. Really, get off of that. Hold it. Get off of that. Okay, we got one. First fish of the day. Really, really, watch out. Okay, Daniel's checking the bait right now, and all of our bait. So you can tell uh, that something ate. Something ate half of this shrimp. Usually, usually small fish are nibbling at it or it could be a crab. Now throughout the year Daniel does these lessons because there's different species of fish that run different times of the year. Now the best time is late summer and why is that? The reason why is that you have something called a mullet run. So these little small mullet fish, great bait fish, they come in schools, they come shallow. That brings the game fish inshore so you can catch all these big reds, black drums, a lot of different types of fish. Now, if you want, if you want a lesson by Daniel, winter time is fine. He's going to get you on some blues, and then you got the pompano run. When? Pompano run comes around late October. They come from up north in the Carolinas. They make their way down to Palm Beach. The reason why is that it's a fish that has no scales on their body. They're very sensitive to the water temperatures. As the water temperature starts to drop, they start heading south. They pass through Jacksonville. It's a great time to catch a lot of pompanos. And that's probably the best eating fish on my menu. Now, right. beyond this, you have to understand that Daniel Kim is an executive chef. All the catch goes to the clients, correct? Right. And you're going to teach them how to buy the rigs and also how to cook the fish. Right. So this is a 360-degree lesson by the best in the business, Daniel Kim. Yes, go ahead and cast one out. Okay, this is going to be about a 300, 300 and... Uh, 30 yard cast. It's so far out I can't see it. Yeah. So anyhow, Daniel, uh, how many hot spots do you have here on the first coast from Amelia Island to St. Augustine? Actually a lot. From Amelia Island to St. Augustine, probably about one every seven miles I would say. So that's going to be very convenient to where you're located. You won't have to travel far for your four hour lesson here in the morning. Every about 10 minutes, we'll check each line to see if there is any action on the bait, and if so, to rebate. Here, Daniel's using the short line so the cast will not be as far. He wants to get this bait kind of on the shelf. Go ahead. This will probably be a 200 yard cast. You can see it right there. So he has staged his bait out there as long, medium, and short, hoping that the pompano take the bait today. After after Daniel's rigged it up, he's now going to bait those circle hooks. But there's two different ways of baiting, correct? Right. There's two ways to do it. One is to follow, follow curvature of the shrimp. Go ahead. The other thing I like to do is also come through the backside. So for this one, I'm going to do it on the backside. And it comes through that part of. Okay, let me see the other way. The other way, I'm gonna go with the curvature of the shrimp. Okay, that's how most people bait with the curvature. With the curvature, and I have it going through right there. And that is key of keeping your bait on the line and that the fish gets hooked because of what he's looking at as he attacks the bait. Okay, what Daniel's doing right now is he's baiting the hooks but there's a certain way of baiting 
the shrimp and what type of shrimp you buy. So tell the new fishermen out there what type of fish you're looking for or, uh, off of what type of bait. Okay, so what I'm using right now is fresh dead shrimp. And the key word there is fresh. So what you don't want to do and what you want to avoid is buying frozen shrimp and then having a thaw. And the reason why is that once the, once the meat of the shrimp freezes and then it thaws, the meat becomes very soft, kind of mushy, doesn't stick on the hook, fish can just rip the shrimp right off the hook. So what you want to get is fresh dead shrimp. And there's a certain way of putting the hook in. What type of hook are you using? I use something called circle hooks. And what circle hooks are, unlike the traditional J hooks, circle hooks are, are self-hooking hooks. So you don't have to stand by your rod. You don't have to wait for the rod to feel the nibble or feel the bite. And then you don't have to set the hook. The hook sets itself. So you can just relax, sit back, enjoy yourself, and wait for the rod to bend, and you have a fish hook. I might add that we bring a custom a premium coffee to the beach for our clients. So... But anyhow, the circle hook has more curvature to it, correct? Right, it's got more cursor to it. So when a fish grabs the bait, what it does, it doesn't just grab it and sit in one stationary spot and eat it. It grabs the bait and as it's swimming off it, eats it. So what a circle hook does is, when a fish grabs the bait and swims off it, it's gonna reach around and actually hook it by the side of the mouth. So it's a lot easier to unhook the fish. If you catch a fish that's undersized or unwanted, it's very easy to unhook the fish and the fish more or less survive as opposed to a J-hook, which can get caught down the throat and fish is pretty much going to be dead when you pull the hook out. Okay, that's a little bit on hooking and he's going to show you how to tackle up in the next program. Okay, we've got uh, two of the rods up and and uh, Daniel uses three different length rods. Why do you use three different lengths? Well, the two longer ones are surf rods and that's very key when you're surf fishing. The reason why is you want a rod that's long enough with a flexible tip so you can cast far enough into deeper waters and over sandbars where the fish actually are. Okay, so so the tip is very important to the casting dis distance. And what you're doing right now is tackling up. And yeah. so you're going to learn how to, to tie these knots, how they're tied professionally, and what about those neon uh, little buoys you got on there? Look at that. Okay, so what I have here is we have a little bit of a styrofoam orange float that helps prop the bait in the water because the bottom rig so it's going to be at the bottom of the ocean floor and having this little orange thing is going to lift the bait off the ground. The bead here resembles like a base of eye and the color. Fish are attracted to that. Okay so what you're saying is that that's the bottom rig, the buoy, uh, how much it buoys off the ground or the floor of the, of the ocean here and also it's attractive in colors because it represents the eye of the bait fish. Okay, okay, we're here with the professional surf fisherman Danny Kim, and we're at the 7th Avenue South Jacks Beach, Florida. And uh, Kim's going to demonstrate a professional cast, but before that, he's going to explain to you how to hold the rod. All right. So what we have here is we have a, a spinning reel. So in order to cast this, what you want to do is open the bail, open it down. You want to hold the line here, and what's important is. Most people don't hold it like here, they'll hold it up here, but a better way to cast it is right here at this juncture. Okay, so you're using a two finger and release? The, yeah, and the reason why I'm using two fingers, I'm using braided line, which is a much sharper, thinner line. You can cast a lot farther because it breaks through the wind. However, it's a little more dangerous on your fingers. You can cut yourself if you're not careful. So what I'm, very, what I'm going to try to do is hold it with my two fingers, we'll hold it by the fingertips. So my finger won't get caught and I won't actually cut my finger when I cast it. Okay, for the gals, for the gals, he's going to get you to at least cast at 50 feet on your first lesson. Probably by the end of the lesson, 100. And for the guys, it's going to be double that, 100 foot, end of the lesson, 200 foot. What he's going to demonstrate now is a professional cast of how far? Yeah, I'm thinking about 300 feet. Okay, so you're going to take a look at a 300 foot cast. Okay, go ahead, Danny. Now that cast is about 300, and what he's trying to do is cast over the sandbar into that deeper water. I'm going to set it, and get right back to you. Okay, Danny, now uh, the swivel is about four inches from the tip, right? What is it? Is this a 10, a ten foot? Like it ten be. foot rod? Sorry? It's a ten foot rod? Ten foot rod. Okay, you're holding a two, two pinch? 
right there. Okay. Make sure the bail's out of the way. The bail's out of the way. Free. And what are you looking for? How many how many foot casts? 100, 120? Right now I'm gonna let it let it rip. Go you're gonna let one rip. Can. Okay, this is he's gonna let one rip. Okay, everybody want a lesson? Here it is. Watch this. Okay, watch. Oh! Well, I'm thinking that was 170 that was. feet. I think it was. I saw it go in. How far? I don't know. Maybe like 150. What? Like 150 or 120. And of course, this is right from Philadelphia. These are the pen wheels. Best wheels you can buy for serve. These are two piece rods. Telescopic. Okay. You're not moving this way. Okay. Because the only way you're going to catch fish is to throw exactly. way out there. Got to watch out. You know, 150 foot throw. Right. Or you're not a pro. Yeah. Okay, so Coco, this is their second uh, cast of her life. Uh, Danny is actually showing how to uh, take the swivel about four inches. Hey, watch out. Here she goes. Okay, she's got one over, over there. She's crossed the line. She crossed the line. Somebody said, oh, oh.